The federal budget consumes more than $3 trillion every year. At its current growth rate, federal spending will burden Americans with massive tax increases, crippling debt, or both. To avoid this outcome, we must identify federal programs that can be privatized, transferred to states, or eliminated altogether. It is time to downsize the federal government. Farming is the most coddled industry in America. Over the last century, the number of farms in America has plummeted while the number of employees at the Federal Department of Agriculture has exploded. So a century ago, there were six million farms in America. Today, there's only two million farms. But the number of employees at the Department of Agriculture has increased from about 3,000 to over 100,000 today. The Department of Agriculture spent $95 billion in 2008, $800 for each U.S. household. The agency operates nearly 200 different subsidy programs and has 7,000 offices across the country. The department also oversees 1,800 pages of laws and more than 10,000 pages of regulations. The U.S. Department of Agriculture spends about $30 billion a year on subsidies to the farming and agriculture industries. No other industry gets the government benefits that the agriculture industry does. The average American farmer now makes more than the average American family. In 2007, 28% more. That means average families pay taxes to support farmers already earning higher incomes. Farm subsidies get harder and harder to justify. They damage our economy, raise prices for consumers, harm farmers abroad, and do little to improve food security. 90% of agricultural subsidies go to the production of five crops, corn, cotton, soybeans, wheat, and rice. If our food security depended on subsidies for production, we'd be in big trouble because a lot of the foods we see on the supermarket shelves, fruits, vegetables, poultry, livestock products, hardly receive any subsidies at all. American subsidies that are based on the volume of production encourage overproduction. It distorts the choices that farmers make. When they can't sell all the, the crops that they produce here, they sell it on world markets. In other words, it artificially depresses the world price of many of these commodities. And that's bad news for farmers abroad who depend on selling commodities for their income. And some of the distorting effects of USDA programs have raised prices for foreign consumers of agricultural products, thanks to ethanol. The USDA is also partly responsible for administering America's ethanol policy, which basically turns corn into fuel. And studies have shown that the ethanol policy in the United States is responsible for up to 70% of the price increase in corn, which then flows into the prices that people pay at the supermarket. Given the problems that subsidies create at home and abroad, how does the agricultural sector stay so protected? The agriculture committees in Congress themselves are dominated by farmers and rural interests. If you're a farmer or you're from a rural area and you get elected to Congress, you immediately make a beeline to the agriculture committees in Congress so you can vote subsidies for yourselves and for your friends and neighbors back home. This is a brutal conflict of interest that is rarely raised in Congress. Most farm subsidies go to large corporate farms, not uh, the many small-time farmers there are in America. Take Riceland Foods, for example. According to the Environmental Working Group, this one company received more than half a billion dollars in subsidies between 1995 and 2006. We ought to immediately terminate the farm subsidy programs, which are harmful to the economy, they damage the environment, and frankly, they're unfair. But not all federal ag programs cost us in the form of direct taxation. Protectionism in the form of tariffs and other import restrictions force us to pay more for all manner of agricultural products. The sugar program relies on import barriers to keep out foreign sugar from the U.S. market. If you're a candy maker or a food processor, sugar is one of your most important ingredients. So the price of sugar is very important to your daily business considerations. In the United States, uh, over the past decade, the price of sugar has been twice the price uh, of what it's been on average in the rest of the world. That price differential has put many U.S. food processors and candy makers at competitive disadvantages. As a result, some have left the United States to set up production facilities in locations where they have access to cheaper sugar. Just this decade, 
Brock's and the Lifesaver division of Kraft left the United States in search of lower priced sugar. And when those companies leave the United States, they leave in their wake unemployed workers and a depleted tax base. Agricultural protectionism is particularly insidious because agricultural products are food. Food is one of life's necessities. Lower income Americans spend a higher proportion of their budgets on life's necessities. So in essence, tariff policy on agricultural goods is a regressive tax policy. It just transfers resources from unsuspecting Americans to politically connected, powerful lobbies. It needs to be done away with.